Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this new uh, presentation of OTF Connects titled Introduction to Lynx Coding with Marcia Piquet. Uh, my name is Michel Bartman. Um, this is the first episode in a series of six webinars that uh, OTF is going to run uh, over the next five weeks. So today is the first one uh, with Marcia. And uh, all these codings webinars are happening on Thursday afternoons at 4 p.m. So um, I certainly hope that we will see you all for subsequent sessions. Uh, personally, it's my first um, coding session. I have um, no experience of any kind with this subject. My background is actually in graphic arts. Uh, I studied photography in, uh, in Europe and I was a photography teacher. And you can probably hear from my accent, from my uh, Pink Panther accent. Uh, I was born in the French part of Belgium and uh, French is my first language. But um, like all of you, I certainly uh, look forward to learning a lot today. Uh, and actually, I want to tell you a funny story about, uh, about um, coding. Um, I'm, a, I'm a partner in a small software company based in Montreal. Uh, I worked for them. No, I'm, I don't, I'm not working really for them anymore, but I'm still partner in the business. But I was in charge of sales and marketing. And my partners, who are both uh, computer geeks and uh, software engineers, they decided to call the company Elynx with um, E L Y N X. And I never knew why. I, it, it never occurred to me to ask them. I said, okay, it's an original name. And only when I received Marcia's title for today's presentation, I realized that Lynx is actually a coding uh, language. So it uh, goes to show you how much I have to learn today. I, I, I really. I really don't know anything about coding. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So before we start the presentation, I'm just going to quickly, uh, OTF is just asking us to quickly read a, a land acknowledgement. So uh, <clears throat> we acknowledge that we are gathered in the territories of various indigenous people, and we further recognize their stewardship of these lands in which we live, learn, work, and play. And um, we're definitely thrilled to have each and every one of you uh, with us this afternoon. I see we have 31 people in the class and um, I hope that uh, a few more will join us in the next few minutes. I'm hoping to get about 45 people in the class. Um, and we are also extremely happy to welcome uh, Marcia Piquet to this uh, new OTF Connects webinar. Um, let me put Marcia's slide. Uh, Marcia is an elementary teacher who is passionate about exploring progressive education practices and infusing technology in her teaching. And she has been a, an educator for over 20 years, teaching students of all ages and supporting uh, teachers as they begin to teach computational thinking to their students. And she's excited as we uh, all are about the future of education. So how many, 32 people in the class, Marcia, we are Still expecting a few people, but I think that we can maybe start. So if you want, I, uh, I will pass the baton to you. You can uh, share your screen whenever you want and start the presentation. And uh, I'll put myself in the background, but um, I'll, I'll be there if you need me. Okay? Sounds great. Thank you, Michelle, very much. Perfect. Excellent. And I just, uh, I'm, I'm running into a little bit of difficulty. So I'm just going to make sure that I can share my screen here. Oh, yeah. Let me stop sharing mine, maybe. I'm going to stop sharing yeah. mine. Maybe that will make it easier for you. Okay, I've stopped sharing my screen. Okay, so let's just... I have to... Strange, I've done this so many times before. Normally, you just have to click on share screen. I know. And it gives you a an option. All of my options uh, have... Um... Oh, hold on a second. All of my options have uh, um, error messages on them, mm -hmm. which I've never seen before. Do you want to maybe log? If, when you click on share screen, what do you see? I see um, the basic uh, window, and then I have desktop one, desktop two. Um, yeah, and and what happens? You cannot you cannot click on desktop one or desktop two. Or? When I click, like if I, if I, 
It has a triangle with an exclamation point in the middle of it. And mm. when I click on it and click share, it is asking me to open my system. Can preferences. you see? Can you see that I'm sharing my screen for the moment? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I stopped sharing mine again. Let me just go into system preferences and make sure that I have all the permissions that I need. Yes. While I do that, um, I want to say welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to show you links. Um, and uh, maybe we could get started by you could just uh, type yes. in the chat, let us know where you're from. Yeah. Um, what experience maybe you have with um, coding. Um, or if you've ever looked at links before, if you've ever heard of it, if it's brand new, um, you can just let us know. That would be fantastic. Okay, so what I'm suggesting, if you cannot find, maybe you can quit, uh, get out of Zoom and, 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 uh, and come back in maybe if, uh, if nothing else works. Yeah, I can try that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. You are a co-host, so you should have no problem. I know. Strange. I see that one of my colleagues is in, but I don't know if she can help me. Lindy, I don't know if you can. Uh, Marcia is unable to share her screen. Yeah, uh, Marcia, do you want to try and email your presentation to Michelle? No, she, she actually doesn't have a presentation. Uh -huh. No, I don't. Have a actual screen. Mm. Lindy, do you want to do a test and see if you can share your screen just to see sure, if it's... Okay. Uh, Sure, I can. Oh, it's okay. I think I've got it figured out. Uh, okay, perfect. Then For we some see. Reason, we still don't see your, your screen. I think I have to quit and reopen, it says. Let me try to share one more time. And then I, oh, there we go. I just had to click a box that wasn't. Yes, fantastic. <laughs> Here we are. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, but in the meantime, I, I am seeing uh, people from all over the place in Ontario. Uh, I like to see that um, a lot of people are brand new to Lynx, which is fantastic. This is an introduction. So I, I feel like I'm going to be able to give you a lot of information about Lynx. Um, first time hearing about Lynx, um, some experience with Scratch, some experience with Python. Um, so if you have some experience with Python or JavaScript um, or even um, Scratch or even no coding at all, uh, you will be able to be coding today. Um, and so in fact, I, uh, I don't have a presentation to share because um, what I'm sharing is going to be actually live coding. So you're going to be doing uh, the coding along with me. Um, so just a little bit about myself, um, and <laughs> right away I'm going to have to contradict. So Michelle has been saying my name, it's so lovely, I love the French, the pronunciation, Marcia. It's actually pronounced Marcia, which is not as great, but, <laughs> um, but uh, I get that a lot because my last name, Piquette, is French, so it makes sense. Um, unfortunately, my last name is my husband's, so he's the French one, and, and I'm just plain old Marcia. Uh, I have been a teacher um, in the Upper Grand District School Board for 12 years now. I currently teach grade five, and I'm teaching in the elementary remote school, so I've been online with my students since September, and I'm loving it. Uh, I am really, really, really happy that we are doing online learning. I think that it has opened a lot of doors for us um, in terms of uh, what we can do with our students. So um, on the screen there that I'm sharing, you'll see uh, sort of a little bit of um, contact information for me. Um, feel free to reach out. I'm on Twitter at mpket. And also that's my school email address if you want to um, reach me there, if you have any questions or you need some uh, some support with links. Um, and I'll just do a little demo here, click on my little turtle and he can move across the screen. He's very slow today because he is a turtle. Um, all of links coding uses a turtle um, that you program to move in different ways around the screen. And so basically what we're gonna be learning today is about the different parts of links um, and about how to um, navigate and uh, code within this awesome environment. So 
Um, one of one other thing that I'll say is, um, if you have a question, please feel free to uh, put it into the chat. We will do our best to keep up. I will try very hard to keep up. Um, and then we'll have a period at the end for questions as well, if you wanted to. Um, you know, have a chance to turn on your microphone and, and say hello to us and ask questions then. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the chat. What I have done actually is I have set up um, a links club, um, which is um, something that you can all join um, and get links accounts uh, to, uh, to start with coding right away. Um, I feel that the best way to learn this stuff is by doing it. And so um, when you click on that links, you should on that link, the links link, <laughs> you should arrive at a screen that looks like this. Um, that is a login or register screen. Um, I suggest using um, Google to sign in. Um, if you have it, that's what I use. Um, however, you can also use any of the other sign-in partners that uh, that Lynx uses. Um, so the link was just in the chat. I'll add it here again. No worries. Okay. Marsha, maybe you want to check that you have everyone selected. You know, yeah. in in your checked, I, I don't see it either. Okay. Ah yes. Okay, I see it. Yeah, it's there. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> It's funny when we met before, I was like, I'm an expert at Zoom and I, I've used Zoom many times. So uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the sign in with Google. And uh, Lynx is gonna ask me some questions. It's gonna, first of all, ask me what account I want to use um, since I have Google accounts. Um, and it's going to bring me to a page that says OTF webinar or it might also bring me to a page that looks like this. It just depends on the person. Um, so uh, if you are creating an account, which I suggest that you do, uh, you are going to want to go into that profile up here. So where your name is, you're gonna to wanna to click on that profile and you are going to want to create an account this way. So. Uh, Links is um, federally funded for teachers um, right now, which means that we can all get an account for free. Um, and the only two things that uh, the government needs for their funding information is your gender and your postal code. So everything else here is completely optional. Um, the nickname as well, I would suggest, uh, you know, choosing a, a nickname, not necessarily your, your real name, um, or even just your first name is fine as well. And so uh, you can choose your gender, choose your postal code. Again, just for funding reasons, they won't be contacting you or mailing anything out. Yes, it's Canadian software. Um, you'll see up here, once I've done that, that I have something called a trial account. So underneath subscription, it tells me I have a trial account. I'm gonna actually wanna go ahead and change that because I am a Canadian citizen. Uh, and so you'll see here, you want to have an individual account um, right now free for Canadian residents. And so you can go ahead and select that. And then that's when it's gonna ask you uh, for those little bits of information. Um, your postal code, your gender, and then the, the partner that we are using is um, the LCSI, which is the company that founded and created links. And you have to certify that you're a Canadian account, a uh, Canadian citizen, and then you will have an account, ta-da, yay. Uh, if that was really fast, because it was really fast, um, there is a help section that gives you a ton of information. There is so, 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 so much information here for you. So there's um, even just uh, clicking in the user guides uh, will give you information all about registration and accounts and how to videos and getting to know links and all of the, um, the information that you need. Just in terms of the, um, 
the LCSI, this company, um, Logo Computer Systems Inc. Uh, you may have heard of Logo before um, because it was the first programming language um, that was created for children. And it was created by uh, Seymour Papert. Um, and it was created in Montreal in Canada. And so it is a Canadian company. It has been around since the late 1960s. Um, and people have been using this coding language since the 70s. So some of you may even remember in school, the little turtle and you had to make it move around on the screen um, for it was called logo. And, and that's exactly what we're doing here. It's just a new, it's like the grandchild of logo. Uh, so once you've registered, and even if you haven't, um, you should have on your screen two buttons. Um, just like what you're seeing on my screen, there's create a links project and import a links project or micro worlds project. Um, this is what we're going to be working with today. Um, and I just want to lead you through how to create a project and, and sort of show you some of the things that you can do um, while you're using this awesome software. Um, before I do, though, I just want to make sure as everybody are there any questions or any issues that anyone's having? You don't have to have an account uh, to code um, at all. Um, if you create an account, what that allows you to do is uh, save your work. So today's not really going to be about saving your work. Um, it's more going to be about just getting to um, just getting to um, get to know the program. Uh, so sometimes you can only see one button and you might just have to expand your screen. So if you, if you move your screen smaller, uh, one of the buttons can disappear. So just depending on what, what size of a screen uh, you are working with. Um, so that could be one of the, the issues. Um, if you don't see those two options, I'm wondering if maybe you are on a page that looks like... this one. And if you are, those two buttons will appear, you just have to scroll down to the bottom. It's the same. Um, also, can you go back and change the status of your account later? Absolutely. Yes, you do not have to do that tonight. Um, I just wanted to show you the process of how that works. Uh, so not seeing any other questions, which is great. That makes me assume that everybody's where they need to be. <laughs> we'll just go ahead and assume that. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna go into uh, where you all are. Um, our group, our club is called OTF Webinar. Um, if you've set up an account, you should have your name up in the top right-hand corner and you should have the title uh, of your club at the top here. And so we're going to dive right in uh, and we're going to click on this red button that says create a links project. And what that's going to do for us is it's going to open up uh, the coding platform. Um, now there's a lot going on here, so I'm going to take some time and uh, and sort of give you an overview of what you're seeing on this screen. Um, and then I think what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, how the turtle moves. Um, that's okay, Chris. Um, we're going to look, yeah, in your class account is great too. We're going to look at um, how the turtle moves. We're going to look at drawing with the turtle. We're going to look at polygons. Um, and then if we have time, we'll get to some procedures. Uh, so Chris, I'm going to put the link in the chat here again for you. And if you click on that link, and then use one of the login partners, it should bring you to the OTF page. Um, if it doesn't, the other thing you can do is on your name up here, if you click on the arrow beside it, you'll find that your clubs are listed here. So I have a lot of clubs on mine because I've been doing this with a bunch of different uh, people, um, but the one that we're using should be listed there on OTF webinar. Um, so the way I like to do things is I'll show you how to do uh, I'll show you how to do things um, twice. The first time will be a sort of watch. Um, the second time will be a 
you know, if you're ready, you can try to do it along with me the second time. And if you're, if you're needing a, a second set of uh, eyes, like a second view of it, um, then you can watch it again and then try it afterwards. Um, I'm not sure that you need to see the LCSI club logo, Nancy. I'm not sure that that's something you need to see. I think you should be okay as long as you can create a new project. You do not need to have a password because you're using a sign-in partner. So it's gonna take your password from Google or Facebook or whatever you used. So this is the main coding page. And uh, what you can see here is there are basically sort of three areas, okay? The first area is where you're going to write procedures um, for your turtle to do. The second area here that, that's all in white, this is like your canvas. This is where your programs um, will be. Yeah, you can use taking it global as well, Nancy. Um, this is going to be where your turtle moves and does things and where pictures come up. And then this gray area down here is probably the most important for you this afternoon because this is where you're going to experiment with the turtle and learn the different commands and, and things that it can do. Of course, the first thing that we wanna do is name our projects. You'll notice there's a little pop-up there that will tell you. Um, Links is based on Logo. It comes from Logo, uh, so it, it um, has a lot of hints like this. It also runs um, very differently from the, the software that we're used to now. So you do need to save your work. You do need to save it often. It will not save it automatically. Um, so you do need to continuously tell it to save. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just call this Marsha's first project. Um, and then I will click on, for some reason, you have to click on show me more hints. It'll remind you to save it, show me more hints. This is your work area, show me more hints. And then it tells you this is your command center. You can get more hints. We probably don't need more hints at this point. We can head to uh, let me code. Um, if you have a screen like this and your turtle doesn't show up, don't worry, Katie, I can show you how to make a turtle appear, no worries. Uh, so there are a lot of other things happening here as well on this side of the screen, okay? Um, I'm not gonna go into everything right now. Uh, the only thing I really want you to be aware of is the save button. Notice mine has a little red button, a little red light beside it. That tells me that something has changed since my last save so it will let me know now it's clear I know that what I've done is saved even though I haven't done anything yet. Um, so Katie you don't have a turtle on your screen. Okay um, over here underneath the save button there is a little plus button. I'm going to get Katie to go ahead and click on that and then click turtle and then that should add a turtle for you. Katie let me know if it does not. Uh, you might want to go out of the screen and back in just to refresh it. Okay, let me know, keep me posted. Um, I'm just gonna go down here and make my font really huge so that you can see it. So here's our awesome turtle. Um, and the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is um, when you're teaching this to students, it's really important to try to get them to think in, in the perspective of them as the turtle. You know, we have a really um, big inclination to think of this as a pen on a piece of paper that we're using, but um, the way that the programming works, the coding actually works so that it's, you become the turtle. And so you move the turtle in, in a certain direction. The turtle also has a pen inside it. I like to tell the kids that it's like a clicker pen. So, you know, if you have a pen like this, you can say, see, now my pen is down, now my pen is up, um, so that they understand that, you know, you have to put the pen down, you have to click it down to get it to draw. Um, and so that's where we're gonna start with our turtle as well. So we're gonna put the pen down. And then you'll notice as soon as I started typing the letter P, it gave me a whole menu of things that I can do um, and right away, you should recognize that pen down is there. It's, it's what we want. Um, so you can choose pen down, you can type pen down. 
um, and also with a little shortcut, um, PD also is penned down. So you can, you can, you know, use that if you like to. So we're going to do pen down. Yes, Elizabeth, we are recording this, so you should be fine. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so the pen is down. Nothing really happens because remember the pen is inside that turtle. So you can't really tell that anything has happened. So now our next thing is we need to move the turtle. And if I was teaching this to students, I would say, how do you think we're going to move this turtle? What should we tell it to do? And a lot of kids say things like walk, right? And the great thing about this is if you tell this turtle to walk, the turtle will respond, I don't know how to walk. Um, so the kids have to uh, try to, you know, figure things out and, and think, you know, if I was this turtle, how would I move? And then eventually they'll come up with, um, oh, we want the, the turtle to go forward. And so you can type forward. And again, it will come up for you. And this is always fun to, uh, the kids will say, yeah, yeah, forward, and they'll get really excited. And, and you'll, you'll type in forward, and you'll say, okay, now we'll press enter and make it go. Oh, Man, now forward needs more inputs. And so then the, the students start to debate, you know, what is an input? What does it need? How do we tell it to move forward? Um, and you can have great discussions about, you know, how far forward you need to go. You could get out some grid paper um, and really get them to problem solve. Um, so we're going to, for our purposes here, we, oops, we are going to type in forward 100. Um, you'll notice the command turns green and the number turns red when things are typed correctly. So that's really helpful for kids as well. So when I take forward on 100, the turtle moves forward 100 pixels, or we like to call it 100 um, turtle steps. So uh, it, it becomes really um, dynamic. Um, the kids can do all kinds of different things with it. So, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of commands that this turtle knows. Um, they're called primitives, things that the turtle already knows how to do as well. Um, uh, and uh, lots of things that you can teach it. And um, Helene, thank you so much for bringing that up. Yes, not only uh, do we have French, uh, we also have um, a lot of traditional indigenous languages as well. Um, so right now we have, there's French, Anishinaabe, Mi'kmaq, Mi'kmaq, um, Oji Creek. There's a whole bunch. I can show you if we go back to my other screen in languages, you can see all the different languages that are available right now. Uh, so yes, and they are working on more as far as I know, which is fantastic. Uh, so <clears throat> our turtle can do things like move forward, move back, it can turn, um, and you know, you can then combine those things to make it do uh, more complicated tasks. For now, what I would go through with my students is I would teach them, okay, you know, try this. Um, let's do a right turn. Uh, so to do a right turn, R for right, T for turn. Again, I don't know what the commands are in French, um, but you can work on this in French and it will give you um, all the commands. I'll show you where to find that as well. So we're going to do right turn 60. So our turtle has now turned 60 degrees. Hello angles. Um, imagine the, the potential here for using this with geometry and angles. Yes, Amy, I will show you where the uh, shortcuts and commands are. Lots and lots of information. Um, so don't feel like you have to write it down. Uh, so my turtle has turned right 60 degrees. Let's see what happens if I type back and we're just gonna go back 150. And let's do a left turn, um, 145 degrees. And I don't know, let's go forward 100. Okay, so we're starting to make a shape. You can see how the students would be really interested in trying to figure out how to do something like make a square or write their name or, um, you know, make a triangle, make a star, do a repeating pattern, all different kinds of things. Um, 
so that's sort of the very basics of how the turtle moves. Um, sometimes students get frustrated, sometimes you get frustrated, so you um, can get rid of everything that you've done and start over just by typing CG for clear graphics. It's like a fresh slate, you can go right back to the beginning. You can also clear your command center by typing CC, getting rid of all that junk, you don't need to have it there anymore. So um, we're going to start, I'm going to get you guys, you folks, uh, um, coding and we're going to see if we can come up with um, how to do uh, a square. Let's see if we can just figure out a square. Um, and then this would be a really good um, place where you could talk with your students about, you know, uh, how do you um, how many how many degrees do the angles need to be in the corners of the square? It's very um, a great place to start in terms of angle benchmarks. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to put the pen down. I'm going to move the turtle forward. By the way, FD is a shortcut for the word forward. I'm going to move him forward 100. I'm going to right turn 90. I'm going to forward 100. I'm going to right turn 90. So you can see what I'm doing here. And we've made a square. Okay. Now, if a uh, computer coder was to see me do this, type this out line by line, um, they, they would not be happy people. Um, because it's very inefficient, right? I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. And so, you know, you can start to introduce um, the word repeat to your students and say, okay, well, how many times would we need to repeat that uh, command in order for the turtle to make square? And so, you know, they would be able to say to you, you know, oh, squares have four sides and four corners. Um, so then you could start um, using the repeat command, which is very simple. So it's literally just repeat. And then you would say to the students, oh, how many times do we need to repeat this to make a square? Obviously you would need to repeat four times. Um, and then you have to use a funny square bracket and you would just do the exact same thing that you did before. So you would do forward 100, right turn 90. And so now if I do that, lickety split, it happens so fast that you don't even see the turtle move. The, total, the turtle has done a total trip. It's called the total turtle trip. And you didn't even see it move because it's so, so fast. Um, and so kids love this. They, they get really excited. Even the older kids get really excited about this. Um, and so one of the great things is once they've learned how to do a square, they can set that up as a procedure um, and they say, oh, you know, miss, like the, it made a square. I want to just type square and have it make a square for me. So you could say, sure, go ahead. Well, I don't know how to square. And then that's when you can enter sort of the conversation of you can actually teach this turtle how to make a square. So you've told it here what to do. And now you can start to give it those instructions. So yeah, a couple of people have asked about the reference for command. So I'm going to pause and show you where that information is. Uh, I'm talking really quickly and going really quickly because I know that you're a group of educators. Um, when I learned this, I learned it with my class and it was much slower. <laughs> it's a lot of information. So down here, uh, I'm not sure if you saw where I just clicked there. There's a little book just above the help sign. Uh, this little book here actually uh, brings you into something called links learner mode, and it will give you a list of everything you ever need to know. So, for example, forward, back, right, left, home, glide, and then all these other things that we haven't gotten into yet. Okay, so we've got pen down, we've got pen up. Um, there's a bunch of other commands with the pen, you can change the size of the pen, you can change the color of the pen, you can change the background colors, um, you can add all kinds of things to this. Um, you know, we're looking at sort of the, the introduction, the, the geometrical um, properties of what you can do with this turtle. Um, but 
what's amazing about it is there's also, for example, you can put a costume on this turtle. You can click him and drag him around and you can make him wear a costume. Um, so I'm getting way ahead of myself here, but just to give you an idea, uh, you can look at some, let's just grab a sample clip art of a person say. Um, and so now you could click on one of the people and you can turn your turtle into a person. And so now when you tell your turtle to move forward uh, 100, it's your person that's moving forward 100. Notice also that she didn't really move forward, she moved up on the page because the turtle is still facing that way, right? So if you wanted the turtle to move the way that the girl is facing, you'd have to change that up. So, but again, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, so I am going to just get rid of that turtle for a second and get a new turtle. Okay. <clears throat> so what we were going to do is we were going to teach the students, okay, instead of typing this every time you want to make a square, let's write it into a procedure so that all you need to do is type square and a square will appear. Um, and so up here, this is our procedure plane or procedure pane. Um, and you can teach a turtle to do any word that you want to choose as long as you have the commands to make it do that thing. So we're gonna call this one to square. <laughs> Um, I'll show you how to get the girl again, and I'll show you how to get rid of a turtle um, in a second. So to square, um, all we're really going to do is we're going to take this, what we just did in the command center, and we're going to copy it, and we're going to paste it. Um, I already know it works because I tested it out in my command center. There's no reason to type it again and again and again. That's my whole procedure, and to make it stop, I just type the word end. Okay, so now when I come down to my command center, I can type square and my turtle doesn't do it. It doesn't tell me that it can't though, something's wrong. Oh, I know what it is. Do you guys know what it is? I didn't put my pen down. So it did the square, you just didn't see it because it didn't have a pen. <laughs> so I can move my turtle around. I can use that square and keep making squares. Yep, here's the links link. Oh, wait, <laughs> that's not the links link, sorry, hold on. There you go. Um, one of the things that I really like to do um, because it's so fast is I like to introduce the wait command. Um, so if you actually just have your turtle at the end of your line, just have it wait one beat or one second, it really changes the dynamic of your square and the way that things look for your students. So now they can actually see it drawing that square, still really quick, but they see it happening more, okay? Um, so I will show you again how to get the clip art. Um, so let's say you wanted to make the turtle wear some clip art. Um, you just go up here to the plus, the plus symbol and go to sample clip art. Um, I went to people and then I just clicked on the girl. I'm not dragging, I'm just clicking once. And then when I get to the turtle, I click again. And that's how the girl gets there. Um, but I'm just gonna undo that for now. Okay, so I did say that I would show you how to do things twice. So I'm hoping that a lot of you were watching that time uh, and are now ready to try. So. We learned to repeat four times, funny bracket, forward 100, 
write 90 weight. Let's do weight two this time and see what happens. Um, and then our square gets drawn there. Uh, so that's just a really quick introduction to sort of how you can get that pen moving and get that turtle moving on the first day with your students. And it's really, um, it's really easy and really fun for them to get that happening. Um, and then, you know, that procedure is always there. So in this project now I can close it. It's still there. It's not going anywhere. Um, and then, you know, you can do other things with it. So uh, one of the things uh, that I can share with you is that you can, for example, so at this point you could challenge your students and say, okay, what other shapes could you make? And who could make a triangle, right? Um, the neat thing about making a triangle in links is that the angles are gonna be different than if you were drawing it on a piece of paper because now you're in the turtle, right? And so how many degrees do you need to turn as a turtle to make sure that the, the, the angles inside the triangle are the right ones. So it's, it's tricky. It takes a while to figure out how to make a triangle, which is fun, right? It's, it's what, the, uh, what the students need to be doing. And so, you know, you can have them saying, say things like, uh, you know, how many forward would the turtle have to move to make it all the way to the edge of the paper? Um, and so we could try that out. We could say, okay, let's do pen down. Let's move forward. We did forward 100 and only got a little ways. So let's try forward 500 and see what happens. And ooh, what happened there? So um, the turtle actually goes off top of the paper and around and comes back up the bottom. So it'll just go around and around and around. Um, and so then you can say to the students, you can say, okay, well, you know, what would happen if you turned it a little bit and then went forward 1000? Oh, interesting. So lines are getting drawn, things are happening. Students are learning about different um, angles and different designs and different patterns. Um, and then you can challenge them and say things like, you know, how would you uh, make a dotted line? How would you write letters for your name? Um, how would you, um, make a, a hexagon. <laughs> so there's all different kinds of things uh, that you can throw in to challenge them. What I really love about it is that it, it corrects them right away. So if they tell it to do something and the turtle doesn't know how to do it, they get that instant feedback. Yeah, I don't know how to do that, right? So they have to try to figure out what they've typed wrong or what they're missing or what commands they need. Um, and so I'm going to start to um, just pull out some ideas uh, that I can show you. Um, once you have the idea of a procedure down, then you can do some really fun things. This procedure is now called to square. It's a square procedure. When you type square, it will make a square. But you can add other procedures into this. So for example, if we wanted to expand on this square, we could do things like, I don't know, to fancy square. Oh, sorry. It has to be one word. Uh, so for example, if we wanted to make a fancy square, uh, we could do something like, I'm um, just trying to think. Um, let's do uh, square. Okay, so now I'm using that square procedure that I just wrote and I'm telling it to do that in this procedure. Then maybe I want to turn my turtle. And you could do this with your students and say, how many degrees do we wanna turn the turtle? Let's say we're gonna turn the turtle 15 degrees. Uh, yes, two is used to start a procedure because you're talking to the turtle, you're saying, okay, to, tur to do this turtle, you have to, uh, so let's say square, right 15, square, right 15, square. Right away, you're noticing that I should have used uh, repeat here, right? Because I'm doing the same thing over and over again. But this is how your students will, will think about it too. This is how the process that they'll go through as well when they're um, thinking about this. 
And then I will just do one more square. And then always remember you have to end your procedures with the word end. Okay, so then up here I could type fancy square. Oh wait, I better put my pen down just in case. Okay, and so you can start to see the different patterns that you can get uh, there. And then you could, you know, pose problems to your students. Well, how many times do I need to repeat this to get all the way around? And so they could do some trial and error and try to figure that out um, in, in partners on their own in small groups. Um, and they have a lot of fun with it. They have a, a really a lot of fun with it. Um, the great news too is that all of this that I'm showing you right now, I'm just going to save my my project and go back to the to the main screen here. Um, all of this stuff that I'm showing you is actually in the help files. So if you go to the help files and go to user guides, uh, down here. Uh, there is quick theme based activity cards. That's literally what I'm working from to teach you this stuff tonight. So this one called geometric fun, you'll see is literally what we've just been doing. Right. So we talked about the save button. We talked about adding some objects. We talked about the turtle and the work area, the command center, the procedure pane. This is how we started, right? We did pen down, forward 100, try these, write 60. Um, you can print these, they're free. You don't have to have a membership to get to them. Uh, you could give them to your students. As long as you're working through them in order, the students could work on them independently. Uh, you could challenge them, give them the challenges here in the red. You know, can you make a dotted line? Can you print your name? Can you find out how many pixels or turtle steps wide or high? Uh, the work area is. So these are in the help area of the main links page, just right here under help. And then they are in the user guides. And all of these user guides are amazing. Um, this one is the um, quick theme based activity cards. And there's ones for all different kinds of things. There's also a full book in the help files. Um, the resource materials has this book in PDF um, that you can look through. It has the entire book there. I mean, it's all different projects that you can try. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to get to some questions here. Um, if you want to, let me get back into the, the turtle here so that we can answer these questions together. Let's get back into the project. So I just went into my main page. I went into my project and I can look at my project here and I can go and edit my project and it will bring me back to what we were working on before. Okay. Um, so our first question was, how do you completely clear your screen and go back to the beginning? So yes, uh, CG, um, where are you typing it, Lisa? Are you typing it in the in the command center down here in the gray? Hmm. And it's not getting rid of your graphics. Hmm. That's strange. I wonder maybe try reloading the page, and then typing CG again. That might just be a bug. Um, just to try it, or you might want to start a new project just to kind of start over again. Uh, Nancy was asking, is it better to code on the left and then try the procedure or the other way around? So it it's really a personal preference. Um, I was taught to try it out in the command center first because then you know that it works and then copy it into your procedures. Um, the only reason being that, you know, if I, if I want to make sure that this square is going to make a square, if I press enter, nothing happens. So I can't test that out to make sure that it works over here. The command center is for testing things out to make sure that it works. Um, and then the procedures is where you write the code um, to be remembered. 
So it's where if you want something to be saved, um, that's where it gets saved. Nothing in the command center gets saved. So if you type a, an amazing piece of code and you have this beautiful geometric shape that you've worked on and you don't put it into a procedure, it's gone. Um, so that's the, um, that's sort of uh, where it goes, I guess. I don't know, just personal preference. Some people like to do it uh, this way and some people like to do it over here. The cool thing about doing it in the procedures pane is that, you know, if there was a problem with my fancy square procedure, it would tell me in the command center, it would say fancy square needs more information online, whatever, or I don't know how to online, whatever. So it would tell you. Uh, the free downloadable book is in the homepage under help, and then it's under resources. So, um, so I'm just going to clean up my fancy square procedure. I'm going to, first of all, add the pen down. I'm going to repeat and let's say we'll repeat it 30 times. I'm going to do square. Then I'm going to do right 15. And then I can get rid of all this other junk that doesn't need to be there. It makes my procedure much more neat and tidy. And so now if I type in fancy square, then it's going to make it for me. And we'll see if 30 is enough. I know it's not, but we'll just see. <laughs> oh, maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it is. It's too much. Okay, so now I have a really cool design. Um, it's my fancy square design. I can change that name if I don't like it. Now it's kind of to me looking like a flower. So I can change that to flower. It's fine. Uh, and then maybe I want to not have to type flower every time that I want to do that. So you can actually add a button. So if I go over here to the plus menu and click on button, it will give me this cool little button that I can drag around. Uh, and I can right click on the button. And it just says nothing right now. So I can give my button a name. So I'm going to call this button flower. Um, and then I can tell the button, this button to do something when I click it. So on click, I'm just going to use my pull down menu. So I have two procedures here that I can choose from. I can choose a square or I can choose a flower. Obviously, I'm going to go with flower and apply. So now if I come down here and clear my graphics, when I hit that flower button, now it's going to make my flower for me and I don't need to type in any code. Um, and so you could add a bunch of different buttons that you could use. Um, I'll show you, I'll just go back and I'll show you one of the ones that I did. Um, and I can share this with you. All of the stuff that I'm making here, I'll, I'll share with you. So you'll be able to go and see it. Um, this is the, um, the learning that I did recently. Um, so I'll just go into my projects and here's my geometric fun that I did. So I'm just going to clear it. So I've got a ton of buttons on here now, right? Um, so basically I can do, I'm going to actually go into the project so you can see some of the coding. Uh, you can click on all of these buttons and it gives you, um, different procedures that I've written and all of the procedures are over here. So you can see like, for example, they're not complicated to make a hex pattern. I'm going to 24 times make a hexagon turn right and then wait two. And so let's see where that hexagon pattern is right here. So it's just making a little hexagonal overlapping pattern. So while that's uh, going, um, I'd love to give you some time right now to just kind of play around with it, ask me some questions in the chat. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I can answer. So how to clear a line in a procedure. I'm just gonna go out of here now to get back to where we were. 
Um, so in the procedures, the, uh, the writing in your procedures is just the same as um, a word processing uh, application. So you can highlight it, you can delete it, you can backspace to delete it. Um, there's also an undo button. So if you're upset that you just did something by accident, you can click undo. Um, that didn't work, but um, yeah. So you just can go in, click wherever you want. Um, for example, at the end of this one, if I wanted to, I could add a bunch of different lines. Um, I can start down here. I could write another procedure here um, and just go from there. Yeah, I can show how to add the button again. Um, there's actually a lot of things that you can add. Um, this is where you'll find that sample clip art as well. You can add sounds, you can add links, you can add text boxes, you can add another turtle. You can have multiple turtles drawing things at the same time. Uh, and this is where the button is found. So once you put the button in, uh, then you're gonna right click on it to open up and find your, you know, put a label on it. Um, so this one I'll call square and then I'll find my procedure and attach it. So now if I click square, it's gonna make a square. Notice I can move this turtle around and I can make a square. I can move them over here. I can make a flower. Um, yeah, I'm gonna show you that next, thank you. Um, so you didn't put the pen down and then uh, the turtle still moved. Yeah, that's because the turtle moves whether you tell it to put the pen down or not. Um, sometimes you want the turtle to move without the pen down because you want it to move to a different position on the page um, and then put the pen down and start doing something else. Um, so yeah, that's totally normal. Um, so, and the way that students register for this is I'm, I'm gonna show you, uh, you can set up now that you have an account or if you haven't, create an account, you can after tonight. Um, and you can actually create a club. So, um, you know, if I go back into, I'll just save my work. Um, so right now I'm in the OTF webinar, okay. Um, I can go up here in my account where it says Marsha Piquet and I can click on my profile. Now the profile is where we were before, where we started the account. Okay, you can see that I have a school club subscription, uh, which again, free because I'm Canadian. And all of these clubs that I have, I can uh, go into and manage, right? So when you're doing this for your students, you're going to create a new school club and you can name it, you can uh, give it a nickname or you can name it your class number. So mine, um, I think I called mine 5G Otters because our class code is 5G and our, our mascot is the Otters. Um, so I'll just, for fun. Um, and it'll tell you, looks good, but check your clubs, uh, check the EU, URL. This is what it will be for your coding club. Um, and if you're happy with it, uh, you can just create it. You can add a tagline. You can add um, a moderator if you want someone else to, to work on this with you. Um, and then you just click save and it'll tell you, looks good, takes a minute. Um, and uh, it's still saving. It will say, you know, it takes a minute to, uh, oh, it does right up here. It takes a minute to do it. Um, and then once the link is there, you send that to your students and then they get just like you did tonight, you'll get the link and it'll add you to that club. Okay. Um, do you keep adding to the same procedure in a project? Uh, so up here, I'm gonna go back into my, um, into our club here. Another thing I wanted, just before I answer those questions, another thing I want to show you about links is there are different places that you can create projects. So it's kind of not as intuitive as it could be in terms of, of how you find projects. When you come to your club page, you're, it's always going to look like this. It's always going to be OTF webinar or whatever your code is, and then the two buttons. 
Um, up here though, where it says all projects and my projects, you can click on those and you'll see the projects. So right now, if you're in this OTF webinar class, you can click on all projects. And what you'll see is the slide that I made at the beginning, the introduction to links coding with my contact information. If you click on my projects, you'll see the projects that you have created within our OTF webinar club, okay? However, sometimes when you log in, whoops, you're just in the big links community, right? You can still create and an add projects here, but it's not gonna save it to your club. It's, it's gonna save it to the general community. So that's something that you really need to teach your students is to make sure that they're not saving, they're not creating a project when they're on this page, that they're creating a project, they're choosing their club first, and then they're creating a project when they see their club title at the top. And that way it just you know, ensures that they're only creating projects in the specific place that you want them to create their projects. Uh, so this is great. I'm loving the, the casual vibe and just asking questions and answering. This is exactly what we were hoping for, right, Michelle? We were like, yes, let's just let it go. And um, so, uh, do you keep adding to the same procedure in a project? So no, you don't. Each of these um, is a different procedure. You can make super big, huge procedures um, to do a bunch of different things, um, but you'll see um, at the beginning of the procedure is the to whatever, you're teaching it to do something. And at the end of the procedure is the word end. And then as I finish a procedure, uh, you can click on this little, triangle and it will collapse it. So that procedure is still there. It's the square procedure and it's it's there. And if I click on the arrow, it will open back up, right? So now the to flower is a separate procedure and you can tell because there's an arrow there, right? So if I made another procedure down here and I said to whatever triangle, notice the, the, the little triangle there has popped up already. So I know I'm creating a new procedure. Okay, um, so that's how you do that. Sometimes your students will log in and they don't see their projects, but I can see their projects in my teacher profile. So I'm wondering, uh, Rachel, if that's because they're not in that club page. So they first have to go into the club page and then click on my projects. That might be why that's happening. Um, to save your work, uh, Monica says, how do you save your work again? That's this button right up here. It's called save. And really cool thing about this, I'm just going to pull this over for a minute. This is the uh, geometric fun cards. This first, or I guess it's the third card, has all of the buttons labeled here for you. So you can see this is where you name your project. Here's the share button, the save button. Here's where you add objects. Here's different files you can put in. Here's where you click on your procedures to get back to your procedures. Um, here's the clip art button, right? So here you can go back to your projects, um, the commands, the help, all of these different things. It's all labeled there for you in that, um, in the cards. And I'll actually just put this in the chat for you too, so that, you know, if you can't find it right now, because it is deep in, the, in those help files. Uh, yep, I can show the, the club thing again. Someone missed it, that's fine. Uh, so you have to have a school's clubs account in order to create um, a school club. So just in the way that we changed our account type at the beginning, um, I'll show you how to do it. So up here in your profile, the first thing on the left here is your subscription. And I have a school slash club subscription. Um, I'm guessing, Nancy, that you have an individual, um, but you can just click on the green change button and it will bring you to the different types of accounts that you can get. Um, and you should be able to choose uh, school slash club. Um, there is a possibility that that funding might have 
ended or be ending. Um, and if that's the case, um, don't buy a membership just yet because they're hoping that they're going to get some more funding to offer it for free again. Uh, okay, and creating a club, we're going to just go back. So in order to create a club, once you have that school or club account, um, you won't have all of this information here. You'll just have links community. Um, and if you have a club that you've created, otherwise you'll just have links community and then a new create a new school club. So you just click on that and then you can name your club. Um, make sure that you like the URL link that it's giving you and click on save and it will create that for you. And the great thing is once you have that, once you have a club, you can just go into it and you can grab that link anytime to send to your students so that they can join the club really quickly and easily. Okay. So I'll just go back into my projects for a second. Um, and before we stop for questions, I, I do want to give you lots of time at the end for uh, questions because I know that there will be a lot. I hope that there will be a lot. I love questions. Um, I just wanted to show you some of the, the cooler things that you can do. So for example, you know, if I want to uh, maybe change my, I'm going to put my pen down. I'm going to maybe set my pen size. Uh, the default pen size is one. So even if I change my pen size to three and then type flower, you're going to see a very big difference in the size of the pen. Um, if I'm not wanting to wait for that, I can click that stop button uh, and I can clear my graphics. I can also, all of these things are still in play here, right? The, the pen size is still three. Um, I don't need to, to change that again. Um, but maybe now I want to set the color. Notice the Canadian spelling. Uh, let's set the color to green. Just use a single quotation mark. Oh, sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> Loki, no. Uh, and then I'll type flower, or I could use my button. And so now I'm making a green flower. Um, so those are sort of the first steps that you're going to want to uh, take for your class um, when they're getting started with this. And they will love to play with the colors. Colors can be entered either with a single quotation like that, or they can be done by number, which is always really fun uh, because students like to say, oh, let's set the color to 152. Ooh, it's pink, right? So they like to be able to just kind of play with that. Um, and one of the things that my students really loved was um, to set the background uh, color. So set BG for background. And then they would just type in a number and see what it ended up being, right? So they, they had a lot of fun with that. Uh, yeah, that was really fun for them. And is there a way to go quickly between the main page and the project page? Yes, uh, this button right here uh, the arrow with the little person on it uh, will take you back to the main page. Um, and then the last thing I want to show you is how to share your project. So I shared this one so that everyone can see it, um, but I haven't shared this one. When you create a project in your club in links, it automatically saves it just to you. It's saved just privately, um, which is great. Private is the default. Um, however, you're going to have times where you want to share things with students or they want to share things with you. So you can go into properties. Um, and then all you really need to do is right down here where this little button is clicked that says private, you just unclick it and then click save. So now if you guys go, if you go into all projects, then you'll see both of those there. So you can have access to both of those. And I'm, I lied, that wasn't the last thing that I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you one more thing. In the links community, there are a ton of examples that you can take a look at. There are entry level projects to get you started in learner mode. 
So if you go and click on learner mode, it's going to open up a project, this one in particular. Uh, you can actually go into come on, any of these projects. You can click on advanced. There's some advanced projects. There's some games. Um, I don't know how many of you know about uh, Hacker Gal. Um, it's a really popular um, club for girls doing coding. Um, and so they have tons and tons and tons of stuff in here too. Um, and then in the resources in under user guides, uh, there's uh, a ridiculous amount of stuff that you can find in here for uh, yourself and for your students. So lots of stuff. And uh, I'm just going to go back here. And it is 511. So I'll stop but I do see uh, like I'll stop for questions not stop stop I'll stop for questions. Um, we've got a question. Can you please show how to create a club again. Absolutely. So um, I'm going to click on my name here just on the main links page. I'm going to click on profile and this brings up my profile with all my information and all my clubs. In order to create a club, you do have to have a school or club account. If you don't, like if you do, it will say school slash club here. Um, if you don't, you can click on this change button and, and choose that one. And then you can just go down here to create a new school club, give it a name. Um, it's really better if you use your school name or uh, your class code. Um, and then, it, you know, that way it's easy to remember. It will become the uh, URL address of your, of your club. So, um, and then you just click save and it will save it for you and you can send it to your students. And then that way they can, um, that way they can get it directly. Um, that's how you create a club. So again, create new school slash club and then name it and save it. Um, yeah, so let's hear your questions. If you, uh, you can continue with, um, you know, typing them in the chat or, you know, we can uh, open things up if you want to, I think we can, if you want to um, turn on your microphone and ask a question or, um, you know, whatever you're, you're thinking. Um, I just saw another question come up in the chat, so I will do my best to answer that one. How would you use the Linux community projects in class? So here's what I would do. And again, it's really up to you as, as a teacher and as a, as a professional, but a lot of these are created by uh, Team Links. You can see down here it says Team Links. Um, but you will come across some, especially in, you know, the more advanced ones that are created by um, other people. And so um, they're all safe. They're all appropriate for students. And the great thing about it is if you are a coder, um, so now I've just clicked, sorry, I've just clicked on team links. So this shows me all the projects that are created by team links. If you're a coder um, in the real world, you don't write code from scratch, right? You're constantly borrowing from other coders and tweaking things and there's a lot of collaboration involved. And so I think that that's really the way that you want to approach it with your students as well and say to them, you know, uh, it's okay to use some of the code from other people. Um, I'm gonna go into the Terry Fox one because I think it's a really good example. Okay, so this one's really simple. It's got buttons, it's got clip art, it's got Terry Fox. You can click a button and make him run and off he'll go. Um, you can go into this project by clicking edit. And there's no reason that your students shouldn't be able to highlight and copy this, this uh, code and use it in their own projects. Um, and that's a really good place to start to talk about copyright. You know, how can you credit the person who, who, who created this? Well, easily um, notice up here uh, at the top, um, there's just a little note and it's very grayed out. And the reason for that is that it's not part of the uh, code. It's a, like a label or a description of what the code does. And so you could tell your students use the semicolon 
to tell your your code that this is not an instruction and say, um, you know, thank you to the links team for this code or borrowed from the, the links team. This code was used, adapted from the links team just to start to give that credit, right? So that they're um, understanding copyright and, and sort of how that works. Um, some other questions. I'm so glad that you're excited. Interesting activity for learning about fractions, decimals, percent. Yeah, there are so many. There are so many ideas. Um, I actually had my students uh, start to create a game for probability. Um, and in the, I'm just gonna go to the Lynx community again. In the uh, Lynx community, there's geometry stuff, there's math and matches. And then in the, I think it's in the advanced one is a probability, a dice throwing game. Um, there's a gift picker one, which is really cool. Um, so you can see, you know, sort of the, the givers and the getters, and you could start to think about, you know, what is the, what percent chance is it that Michael will get? What are the odds? Um, there's all kinds of different math applications for this. I think in general, it's more um, focused towards geometry and sort of the artistic representations that live within math and that creative and, and um, collaborative uh, thinking and problem solving, but you could certainly do anything that you want. If you even, you know, using the clip art, you could actually make animations and kids could do story retells and um, all kinds of really cool things. You could, um, with the clip art, you know, this is more advanced stuff, but with the clip art, you can actually um, upload clip art into your projects too. So, you know, if you go to this clip art pane, sorry, I didn't name my project. Um, you can add clip art um, and you can upload it from your computer. So anything that is a, a PNG file with a, um, a transparent background, you could put into this and, and make it move around. Um, and then, yeah, do all kinds of really cool things with it. Uh, some other questions here. Do you need to change from an individual account to a school account in order to make a club? Yes, you do. You have to have a club or a school account to make an account for student to make a club for students. Um, yeah, and so the personal info thing is, um, I think, just a disclaimer that they have to have. Um, and obviously, if you're doing this with your school board, you just you have to you know, check with your, your rules. Is it okay to use the Google sign-in? Because the kids will have to use a Google sign-in to get into it um, and, uh, and just make sure that it's okay that way. Um, it is a privacy thing, I understand. Um, but again, it's government funded. It's, you know, it's on the up and up this, this place. So it's, um, but again, talk to your, to your board. Um, when you send the link to your students, are they prompted to create an account? Yes, they are prompted to create an account. They don't have to create an account, um, but if they want to save their work and save their projects, then yes, they need to have an account. Uh, once you share your club code with your students, good, yes. Um, are you able to see their, oh yes, let's do that. Let's go, sorry. So yeah. I can go into, if let, I'll go into my classroom one, um, 5G otters. Uh, so actually, no, sorry, I wanna go into my profile. I can go into my 5G otters and I can, so I just went into modify there. First thing I can do is I can click on users and that's the wrong 5G. I'm actually not going to do it because I won't click on users because it'll have student information there. But if I click on users, then it will show me all the students that are in my club and then I can click on their names and it will show me all their work. So I wonder if I go into our club, wrong button again, OTF webinar manage. I can click on users here and look, I can see all of you. Who should I put on the spot and go see if you've created a project? So all I need to do is just click on your name and I can see all of your projects there that you've created. 
Um, and it's a really easy way to, so I'll just click on myself because then, so then you can see here's my avatar that I've chosen. You can see what your student has chosen. I can see all of the projects that my students have made. Um, and I can even give them a like if I want to. I can, I can edit it, I can add to it, I can select it, all kinds of things that you can do with it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I'm trying to keep up with the... Uh, yes, if you wanna add sound, you have to have the sound file. Um, so just going back to, uh, that's in the uh, add, sorry my projects, Marsha's first project. Um, if I go back in and edit my project and I add here um, a sound, yeah, you have to have, when it says URL, it's strange. You can um, put a, uh, a um, like a link to something on your computer in there. You can, you can upload from your computer there. So. Um, and then, yeah, you can put a sound in and you can make the sound happen when it clicks or when it opens or when something else happens. There's all kinds of conditional things that you can, uh, that you can get into, you know, like if there's, if a flower, um, then play this sound, right? So then once the flower is done, it would play the sound. Mm -hmm. uh... I believe, so Amy's just asking, will you be sending us the recording so we can go back and watch again? I believe you will get a follow-up email, I think, Michelle, that will have a link to the recording. Yes, he's nodding. So yay, I, I'm right about that. So, uh, I'm so glad that uh, everyone is enjoying, has enjoyed this. Um, we still have a few minutes. If you wanna stick around, um, I can show you one more thing or you can ask questions. Um, or also, you know, knowing that it's almost 5.30 on a Thursday. Olivia, <laughs> how do we get her out of here now? Out of the Zoom? Oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, so, Michelle, I don't know if I want to turn things back over to you this early. I don't, I don't want to cut you off um, and not give you enough time to no finish problem. things up. No problem. Yeah. I, I I know that everybody is always eager to go and prepare yeah. dinner and uh, and get everything going for the evening. So it's fine if we finish a few minutes early. You know, it's like students in the class when the teacher says, "Okay, today we're going to end early." Everybody is always <laughs> happy, always always happy. So um, I just want to say it was a fantastic presentation. We definitely learned a lot, and it was different from our other OTF presentation, the first one of a series of six, as I said earlier. And we learned a lot. We learned that uh, unlike uh, in the Fable de la Fontaine, turtles move really, really fast and that they're very good at, at drawing squares, but that they have to have their pen down. And we also learned that uh, coding is really fun for kids and also really fun for teachers. So really, really enjoyed it. Um, I was impressed with the participation. There was a ton of participation, lots of questions. Everybody was helping each other. And that was excellent. And also I was very impressed, Marsh, how you kept over all the questions, you read them aloud before answering them. So all of that is very good for the recording when people will, will, will because they, the chat is not part of the recording, but the fact that you read them aloud right. means that people that will uh, listen to the recording later will be able to hear the question as well. So you did very professional work, really excellent. Um, <laughs> and I just, want to, <laughs> I just want to share my screen again for a few seconds before everybody awesome. goes. Give me a quick second. I don't know how to stop sharing. I'm just, no, it's okay. I'm, I just left your screen. Oh, I'm going to share mine quickly again, if you don't mind, uh, because I can see that people are leaving and I want to let them know that uh, they will receive tomorrow. Uh, everybody will receive tomorrow an email. There will be an evaluation form. We really like it when you take a few minutes to fill up that um, questionnaire because it helps us improve or uh, uh, webinars and get with, come with new ideas and, and, and make them better and better. And there will also be a link with uh, all the information that we uh, presented today, including the recording and the links that uh, Marsha used. So you don't have to worry about that. So you will all get that tomorrow. And I want to tell you, we have another five coding webinars and they are all on Thursdays. So keep your Thursdays open every Thursday, four o'clock. Um, Marsha was the first one. Uh, she was very brave. She started the series. 
Uh, we have one on April 29 called Let Us Code with Amanda Deneau and Ian Brody. We have one on May 6 addressing the data analysis expectation using Google Collab to analyze and graph your data uh, with Peter Beans and Grant Hutchinson. We have um, two on May 13 and May 20 called student-centered key aid culturally responsive coding experiences with three presenters, Melanie Mulcaster, Amanda Williams, and Michelle Peter Adams. And the last one will be on May 27, integrating Minecraft, uh, make code and code builder into your math program with Andy Forgrave, Forgrave. And you know that should be fun as well. So uh, I just want to say goodbye to all of you. I can hear you leaving. Yes, we still have 26 <laughs> people in the class. We had 45. So really, really great, great, great session. Um, I want to wish you all a very good evening and thank you again. And I want to thank Marsha, of course, uh, for doing such thank a great you. job, Marsha. I uh, really and I appreciate it. And I look forward to doing more coding webinars with you. Awesome. I would love that. Excellent. Thank you, everyone, for coming and for all your great questions. Yeah, lots of excellent questions indeed. So yeah. I'll see you all next Thursday. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, and meeting.